Well, hello, Iveta. Uh, thank you very much for being here at Data Native 2018 and for speaking at our conference. First, thank you for the invitation. Um, my name is Iveta Lokowska, and I'm a principal data scientist at HPE, what is Hewlett Packard Enterprise at their Center of Excellence for AI, data, and emerging technologies research. So basically, my role is um, uh, finding interesting projects and leading team in data science fields like machine data or human data manufacturing um, or uh, open data and how to combine those different data sources and create different solutions so end-to-end -end solutions also highly um, optimized computing environments because most of the use cases we deal with are very um, compute intense um, so also creating the topologies for the hardware and the firmware and the infrastructure on which those use cases needs to run is also something we do. So this is my role. Okay, perfect. Um, you, you came here and you talked about how to lie with data science. Um, very interesting title for sure. And interesting to, dis to, to think about how basically you can lie with statistical models or with manipulating the data in a way that you want to get the outcome that you that you want. So perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about that and use any, any use case that you had. Yeah, um, so this came out of my experience. That's why I'm so passionate about this. First, I was working a lot with human data and human data is everything uh, similar to log files or um, human behavior in the digital world. So footprint or um, any paper written or free written text. Um, and so it's highly unstructured and biased. And uh, at some point, you really lose confidence in the things you're producing in terms of data science output, simply because you see that the material you're processing is very faulty. Um, so I was struggling a lot uh, to, to build models and to believe what I'm building, uh, simply because I know that the raw material is very inaccurate. Um, so I shifted to a machine data uh, where I had the belief that it will be much more structured, much more optimized with a very good uh, processes and I couldn't be further from the truth. It was um, even worse than the human data simply because there are no standards in IoT. Um, there are uh, a lot of um, certifications and uh, standard, standards in terms of platforms uh, who are handling the things differently. Therefore, you don't have a unified way of uh, processing all this information from the uh, telemetry data, from the sensors to the last mile of the data science process. And uh, for me, uh, simply giving the opportunity to the people to be aware of, of those tricks and um, I, I would say uh, misleading moments in, in our work is important because I found it with hard work, um, had to deal with it. And I'm sure if people are aware, they will find a way to at least improve the process and the accuracy of the, uh, of the performance. Yeah. Any new projects that you have coming up that you would like to share with, with our community? Yes, I have a very interesting project working on right now. So um, I don't know if you're aware of the HGI uh, sustainable goals of the UN and the World Bank. Uh, so those are goals like fighting extreme poverty until 2030. And extreme poverty are people who live on one, uh, $1.9 dollars per day. So uh, the World Bank predicts that um, uh, to 2030 we will end extreme poverty and there is a lot of misleading information and uh, modeling behind those statements simply because um, those, estima those estimations are done based on survey data. That's what we do is we try to use mobile data and um, satellite images from Google Maps and uh, different uh, imagery providers and try to predict poverty, education, health, cleanliness of the water, uh, the road op optimization um, out of uh, satellite images for the poorest countries in the world. So for example, now we do a project in Tanzania where um, uh, based on Google uh, images with accuracy of 75 centimeters per pixel, we predict the quality of the roofs, the quality of the roads, um, the intensity of the nightlight images, so where it's developed the area, and we give much more accurate um, uh, numbers in terms of uh, the, the um, I, I would say the the environment in this country, also the situation of the people, and how realistic those goals are. Also, how we can improve it. The fact is that you do not rely on their input of how poor or um, healthy they are. You use machine data to predict um, what is the reality, basically. 
if they have a light, if they have a water, if they have a road going to them, if you can send them uh, help or uh, medicals uh, or yeah. So basically this is something very exciting because it has an actual implementation in something which is a pain point now uh, in the world. And that's how data science and uh, I would say um, uh, environment and uh, um, NGOs come together to solve uh, uh, one of the biggest issues of our work. And I'm very excited about this. And are you working on this? Yes, so I'm the lead machine learning um, uh, a researcher who, who is having a team of several uh, data scientists and we are developing the whole process of acquiring the images so we uh, actually have funding from the European Space Agencies and uh, uh, Asian uh, banks to um, develop uh, those models and the technology to be able to predict it because once we know we are the poorest in the world then we can actually uh, attract, uh, not attract, but we can uh, um, direct this problem and address this problem. So this is part of the Helen Packard uh, enterprise then? This is a combination with many other partners and the ecosystem is really big, so it's never a simple uh, vendor or a company uh, which is doing this, but that's the fun because you have um, very domain specific experts doing specific things, let's say um, researchers or uh, people working in development who understand what's behind this data and then you have the technical component which comes from us because we are the technicians and the data manipulators at, at the end. But without the context of the uh, experts, our knowledge has no uh, applicability. Well, maybe it will be good if you can come and talk about it next time. Well, 2030, that's a long way to go, yeah. but perhaps, perhaps maybe in a couple of years you would have some more input or insights for how the project is going. Actually, we already have a poverty clock up and running with real data. You can uh, check it. It's called uh, a World Data Lab, and under it you hit see the poverty clock, the population clock, because we also count population. Um, at some point, we'll be overpopulated. Uh, but we predict that the population growth will slow down almost to zero in 20 years. And also we create healthcare clock and education clock for developing. Almost to zero? Yeah. To zero in terms of uh, the rapid increase we have for the moment. Simply because when people get more educated um, and uh, they start having access to education and healthcare, they're having less uh, kids. So the, the growth of population will happen not because of too many babies, it will happen because of people are living longer. So the, it, it's simply we are living longer on the planet, that's why we are getting more. Apparently the, the, the person who's going to live until 150 already was born. We predict it will be in, in South Korea because of the kimchi. The kimchi has the biggest concentrations of probiotics and uh, the South Korean women are out aging everyone else in the world and uh, the prediction is that uh, in about five years they, they will be almost all above 100 years old so the chance that it's a South Korean woman who lives to 150 is really high what other kimchi that's the <laughs> what other interesting insights have you already uh, found that you can share with us that people are very pessimistic um, in terms of how the world is developing I really like those topics because I'm a person who works with data and I every day realize how biased I am and how wrong I am about the world. I highly recommend that you look into the book um, Factfulness. It's a Swedish uh, doctor who worked on, um, for example, um, how people perceive the world in numbers and analytics. So let's say um, if you are in the top 1% of the world, because when you ask people, um, do you consider yourself uh, one of the richest people in the world? in, in uh, Germany or Austria or Sweden or whoever and wherever they are, they say, no, I'm in middle class. But basically, uh, when you check yourself, you're at the higher end of the, uh, of the world and there are very few people living like this. But now the middle class, I think a month ago, um, most of the population on the planet uh, lives in middle class. And this mainly comes from Asia. So these are very interesting findings. Last question. Uh, so you're here at this conference, thank you for coming. What are your thoughts perhaps you can share with us on this conference? It's really fun. I highly recommend it to everyone who wants to learn more about data science. People are very chill, uh, very casual. You can approach and talk uh, uh, with everyone, so I love it. It's um, very content specific, so for the people who are in the field, people who want to learn, um, 
this is the place for them. So I like this chill atmosphere. I like the people. I think the Berliner are really cool. So really friendly when coming from Vienna. It's, it feels like a, a very friendly land. So I'm really happy that I'm here.